Hi, hello, welcome back to the channel. This is Balaji. So I have got an interesting question asked by one of our followers saying, can you please teach us how do we do a root cause analysis, say for example, an e-commerce company. And I have an answer for this today. I put it down here for you and I shall explain how this gets done. All right, so now let's define the question now. Say we take a situation where you work as an analyst at a, a company like maybe Amazon and uh, you are give, been given a situation where there is a drop of sales by 10% month on month or but let's may, maybe make it like week on week uh, all right so there is a drop in sales by 10% week on week and one Monday morning your manager asks you to find out why the drop is. So how would you find out? I here have structured a method or the basic framework on all the possibilities that you can explore so that you can come up with a answer or a reason why it fell. And most of the interviews also ask such a question or case study, which are expected to answer and give the possible root cause for this situation. So let's go through the framework. I put it down in every possible uh, way and let's go through it. So on top we have e-commerce sales drop by 10% week on week. What could be the two possible reasons that they could be dropped? A. An external reason. B. An internal reason. I'll tell you what these two reasons may be. I'll put it down. Now coming down to the external reason. The external reason could be a demographic issue that is something pertaining to one specific area. Competitor actions, that is you might have a rival who is doing better than you or giving more discounts than you and therefore the crowd is shifted to the rival. A collateral damage, something happened somewhere and you got affected and a sentimental issue. That is the sentiments are low and the sentiment is directly affecting the company. I also given some examples on what could be the issue Say for example, demographic, certain geography brand your company product, maybe a city or a state brand your company product and therefore people are not ordering from there. Or maybe there is a power outrage or network outrage in the city or a specific demography and orders could not be raised from there. And that could be your highest dense uh, contributing order city. Or something like a natural calamity, for example, uh, Chennai gets flooded at the end of the year and there barely any uh, power there's barely any power there and order cannot be raised and if chennai is the highest contributing city for you uh, all the lot of orders that you get from chennai might be down to zero and that could have affected your sales now coming down to competitor actions uh, competitor like maybe flipkart maybe giving a discount on a day like big billion day and that could have been unanticipated for you and all the customers moved out from Amazon to Flipkart. Or maybe there's one specific vendor that is a seller who was selling uh, on only on your platform and they moved out to another platform like Flipkart or any other competitor's platform. Example, Motorola used to sell or sells only on Flipkart and not on Amazon. And maybe if uh, something like Another company which sells only on Amazon move to uh, another rival that could be a big loss for you because it might be a customer favorite item. So I have given a, another example where uh, how cab and rickshaw drivers are opposing bike taxes that is essentially uh, Uber and Ola drivers are opposing uh, Rapido taxis that is a bike taxi and Rapido is under uh, under a huge trouble right now because of this issue. Although it is not directly by the company, this is a competitor action and a collateral damage. So we all did experience pandemic and because of the pandemic hit, people start buying, going to the stores, buying anything online to keep money safe. And uh, layoffs happened and given people did not have savings, uh, this could have decreased the no, amount of sales in the given week and continued week further and this is a collateral damage where the company is not directly at fault but something happened somewhere else and company incurred the losses so there are multiple more examples like this how 
or collateral damage could affect a company. Example, how UPI payments lower the sales of one rupee candies and case of pickpocketing because there is no uh, cash exchange, there is no exchange of uh, one rupee coins and therefore we, uh, the shopkeepers used to just give back a candy in exchange for a one rupee coin stop giving them because it was not your UPI payments and uh, the companies like eclairs uh, companies producing eclairs and other candies uh, had a uh, degrowth and case of pickpocketing is another case where because everything is UPI transaction people barely carried wallets and there's no pickpocketing actually happening so that's one example and how meta serving your drop because Apple changed its privacy policy. So Apple made its security more stricter and they made the privacy policy more stricter that uh, Meta could not access the customer's uh, transactions or any other customer details. And therefore, given Meta is a very uh, data-centric platform and they could not get data, their revenue dropped after that. And as you see now, uh, chat GPT's introduction will take away your jobs. Not that you are not good at your job, but there is someone else better than you to take away your job. Uh, these are collateral damages where it's, you are not at fault, but somebody else is, uh, whatever somebody else does is affecting you. And sentimental damage. So, for example, a media advertisement might have gone wrong. It would have hurt a heart of people, uh, religion, or uh, one specific kind of people. And because the media advertisement went wrong, people would not like the company or may not order from the company, and that would have caused the degrowth in sales. These are a few of the external reasons that are that would have caused degrowth in sales. So there's one other example that I put down where once Snapchat CEO talked ill about India and people uninstalled Snapdeal because both of them sound very similar. And this cause a huge loss for snap deal that week. So these are some of the external reasons that could have caused an issue. And let's move to the internal reasons that is something with respect to the company itself, which could have caused an uh, degrowth. So internal reasons could be technical, non-technical and policy changes. Let's look into policy changes first. Policy changes are something like uh, what the company's management changes and that could have not gone right to the customers or people associated with the transaction. That is an example, uh, maybe some of the SKUs that is stock keeping units or the variants or the items might be restricted on the portal or the platform and that could have been a major contributor to the sales and because that is not there, the sales would have gone down or maybe uh, the company started charging a higher commission from the sellers and because the sellers are not happy they would have pulled out their products from their platform or maybe on the customer end the company might be charging a higher delivery fee or a higher average order value for a free delivery and given come not all customers can uh, afford it they might have moved to another platform which is charging and lesser so this could be a policy policy changes and non-technical stuff could be marketing spends are down. Maybe they're not marketing on Facebook and Google Ads. The social media posts are gone down. Or they're not sending push notifications. which is not triggering people's activity on the app or the platform. And that is causing a decrease in sales. And company discontinues a campaign. And people who join through it left. For example, take, uh, take Zomato Gold. So people would have joined Zomato Gold because they are getting offers. But in case Zomato Gold is shut down all of a sudden or not, maybe not all of a sudden but it's shut, just shut down, people who joined because they are interested in Zomato Gold might have left the app because they are not getting any benefit. And that could have caused a slump in sales. Now coming down to technical issues. Uh, technical issues can be maybe pertaining to an operating system or a platform. So I put on Android, iOS and web. Web is uh, essentially the browser on the desktop. And this, if we could identify which of these uh, platforms is a degrowth happening at 
are being shown at, we could go specific to that. For example, if it is happening on Android or iOS, we look at if there is any Android update or iOS update. If there is any Android or iOS update, we can know that this specific version of the app caused a major downturn and we can revert back to the previous version and check for any bug that was in the current version that was upgraded. And if this technical issue is underst understood, the entire thing can be reverted back to the previous way it, how it was and we can find what the bug is or if it is on the web. So it could be a UI UX change that is all the colors have changed, how the interface looks has changed and people using it on a daily basis might not feel comfortable to use the uh, application. Similar thing with the iOS or Android app, the UI UX has changed or the placement of CTA buttons. CTA buttons are essentially call to action buttons. This could be a checkout button or a save button etc. Maybe with the save button or the checkout button is buried somewhere in the corner which is not visible to a human eye and because they could not check out people are dropping off and that could have caused one major issue to the drop in sales. Continuing the internal issues uh, let's go into the funnel of how a user progresses from the start till the end and find out which possible place could the user have dropped off and could have affected our sales. So here's a funnel. The funnel starts from the user opening the app up until the user completing the transaction for that session. So let's start off from here. Let's say the user opens the app, but the app crashes. So that could be one reason why people are not active on the app and they could not make any purchase. And uh, if that is not the reason, let's go forward. The sign up or sign in page. So on the sign up or sign in page, either people are not able to log in and that is causing a temporary uh, pause in them logging in or they are not receiving OTP after entering the mobile number that is also essentially them not being able to log in. If they are not able to log in, they cannot place an order and they cannot complete the transaction and therefore that could be an issue and if that is fine, they land on the home page. Home page is the first page of the app or the web and the possible issue here could be the page is not loading because the page is buffering and not loading and this could be a with respect to any page on the app or the web, if the page is not loading, people cannot purchase and therefore the session ends there. Considering that also is not an issue, moving forward, uh, after, the, uh, after the customers land on the home page, they either scroll categories or search for the product they want in the search box. Assuming they scroll, what happens is all the example what if the high value items or highly selling items are buried in the bottom that is people should be able to see the uh, see a picture or the item on the first side for them to buy and if it is not available for them on the first side it the uh, transaction not might, might not proceed further so say for example a person buys gadgets but on the home screen the gadget section is to the bottom of the screen it is very likely that the person did not look uh, did not happen to see the gadget session and therefore he would have thought or he might have not wanted to make a purchase and would have exited the session this could be one reason or the suggestion algorithm is not doing as best as what it has to do say for example in the previous example the person buys on the gadgets but what happens if you're going to give suggestion of fruits and vegetables to the person given uh, the person is not going to buy fruits and vegetables they are not going to proceed forward in the transaction but given that they were here to purchase a gadget and not fruits and vegetables this could cause a temporary pause in the person moving forward or say for example uh, they do not scroll to categories but they directly go to the search box and search for the product they want if the search is not yielding the right result they will not be able to discover the item and therefore they will not be able to proceed forward example whatever is happening with amazon prime you know that uh, searching on amazon prime never yields the right movie and therefore people do not really watch movies on amazon prime these days 
So that could be one reason why there's a drop off. And this could be related to any technical update that happened in the past week or past month. Suppose that we have the user adding items to the cart. The issue here could be people are not adding to the cart. That is add to cart is not actually adding. Pressing on plus one or plus two is not increasing a cart item. Or once they have added to the cart, they are not able to edit the cart. If either of these two happens, people will drop off because they are not able to do what they want to do. Considering that also goes fine. Next step is proceed to checkout. Once you add everything to the cart, people usually click on the proceed to checkout button that is moving to the checkout page from the home page wherever they are buying at. If that single button is not visible to the eye, that is if it is buried somewhere in the bottom or in the corner or the color of the button is changed, it could possibly affect the user moving forward because they are not, they're not able to find the button and they are not able to move forward. So this is one of the other reasons. Okay, now the person validates the final amount. What happens when they uh, validate the final amount? They usually see some unanticipated charges included. So when they see unanticipated charges included, maybe like delivery fee or GST or random donation charges, which is mandatory and they cannot exit from the charges, they will drop off and go to some other portal where they can buy without the extra charges. This could be one reason why the checkout page drop off generally happens. And uh, if that is also not a reason, they go on to apply coupon. Here, usually people proceed the transaction if there's a coupon that is available to them decreasing the final price. If the person is unable to uh, use the existing coupon that they have, maybe they have got it free somewhere and they are trying to use it. Or if the coupons have a, a terms and conditions clause like you will have to purchase for about X amount before applying this coupon otherwise it wouldn't be uh, movable. Or if the people or the customers are unhappy with the offers. If any of these three happens, they are going to stop their right there. And moving forward, they choose a payment mode. The issue here could be that the most feasible mode of payment that is the UPI might not be available or the card that you have is not accepted, the credit card or the credit card that you have is not giving enough uh, discounts or even if the payment is moved forward, the bank transactions are failing maybe from the bank side and this could be the most possible reason why the payment section might fail and even if that is successful and the uh, transaction gets completed if there is some issue with the logistics where the delivered goods are not rightly delivered it could be like complaints that uh, the seller is selling fake goods like fake apple watches and fake iphones or longer than del anticipated delivery time that the user uh, cancels the order and asks for a refund or if the order is delivered but damaged. So in either of these three cases, the user returns it and that also adds to loss in the revenue. So this is these are the possible causes for the drop and funnel. And pretty much that's it. Where I've explained every possible drop and funnel. And uh, this should definitely help you answer any kind of questions that would be asked in your interviews. Also, I shall add the link to this Figma file in the description below. Do check it out, do download it and do go through it. If you need any help, put it down in the comments and I shall be happy to help you out.